So let's get started by creating the knuckle part. What sets SOLIDWORKS apart is its unique balance of ease of use and power. One way SOLIDWORKS makes it easier is to allow commonly used commands to be customized to the gesture wheel or the shortcut bar, which you'll see throughout the demo. Geometry can be easily sketched and dimensions can be added on the fly to properly size the geometry. Adding material to the part is as easy as dragging the sketch in either direction or about the mid-plane by holding down the M key and snapping it to the ruler to define its depth. We need to add some more material on the left to attach the hydraulic cylinder. This time we'll sketch without adding dimensions, which allows me to quickly define the shape. When complete, we'll let SOLIDWORKS fully define our sketch, which we can then size to our liking. Not only does SOLIDWORKS add all the dimensions, but it adds the relations as well, such as this horizontal relation between the center of the circle and the origin. As before, we can easily extrude this boss to its proper depth. We need to add some material to connect the two bosses and cut some material from the left to accept the cylinder rod eye. I'll start by creating some construction lines to help define symmetry in the model and create a rectangle that is 70 millimeters wide and we'll snap it to the silhouette edge of the boss. Instead of sketching another circle, we'll convert the edge of the boss to sketch geometry. This ensures that if the boss diameter changes, so will our sketch. To add symmetry to the sketch, we can apply dynamic mirroring, which mirrors the geometry as we sketch. Notice that as I sketch this tangent line, the line is duplicated on the lower side as well. Dynamic inferencing allows me to easily sketch this line so that it remains parallel to the top line and our sketch behaves in a symmetric manner as we resize it. Let's add some dimensions to define our sketch using the Smart Dimension tool. The width of the legs will be 25 millimeters. The angle will be 4 degrees and the pocket will be 90 millimeters deep. There's no need to trim our sketch geometry as we can select individual contours to choose exactly what we want to extrude and drag this to 120 millimeters. We need to remove some material from the side of the part and we'll do so by leveraging the rectangle from our previous sketch. The depth of this cut can be dragged to size or we can choose to extrude this cut through all in both directions. We can easily clean up these bores by deleting the faces and SOLIDWORKS will patch the geometry for us. Machining sharp edges adds cost to the part, so let's add some fillets. The edge selection toolbar pops up, enabling intelligent selection of similar edge combinations that may be useful. For this case, we'll choose to fillet all the concave edges with a 10 mm fillet. This creates a single fillet feature that enables me to control the size of all the fillets at once. Design reuse can save a tremendous amount of time, and one way SOLIDWORKS enables reuse is through the design library. SOLIDWORKS provides many reusable parts, assemblies, features, and annotations, as well as an extensive library containing millions of fasteners. This library can be customized to add your own models as well, such as this grease fitting port. Reusing these items is as easy as dragging and dropping them into your design. This port contains several different sizes or configurations. We'll choose the quarter inch NPT port with a counterbore. The first reference is already defined, as that's where the feature was dropped, so we just need to define a dimensioning reference. Locating dimensions can be defined on the fly, and we'll make this 125 millimeters divided by 2, and the angle at 60 degrees. It's that simple, and SOLIDWORKS has added several features to define the grease fitting port. Finally, let's define the material for this part and we'll choose AISI 1020. This material definition not only changes the color of the part, but defines all of the mechanical properties as well. 